YouTube, welcome to another video. This is my first video with a webcam. This is kind of a face reveal if you guys have never seen me before. So hopefully you enjoy this. All my videos are gonna have a webcam now. And today we're gonna be doing an update on Bitcoin USD. We're gonna be going over what's going on in Bitcoin, what to be expecting, and everything pretty much, all right guys? If you enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all right? Also, if you're interested in joining my mentorship, make sure you can hit me up. My contact information's in the description if you're interested in joining my group chat or interested in learning smart money concepts like I have here on my YouTube. All right, guys, let's get right into it. So we're going to start Bitcoin by doing a top-down analysis, looking at structure. So if we're looking at Bitcoin in the long term, it's obviously very bullish. And we can see that this was the lowest that the market was ever at. And then we had a higher, whoops, and then we had a high right here. And this was the first big rally Bitcoin had in 2017. And then we had a unconfirmed higher low get created. For all we know from this point, the market could have just traded completely lower and just crashed. So at this point, we didn't know if that this was going to be the higher low or not. But then we see that the market eventually takes off and creates a new higher high. Now, what do we expect after a higher high is created? We expect another higher low. So after we broke above the structure of this high right here, giving us, like I said, a higher high, this is a BOS then we know we don't know where the market's going to stop out at for all we know the market could have stopped here it could have stopped here it could have stopped here but for us right now we know the top was about 64k 65k so after a higher high is created we expect a higher low to be formed now if we're just looking at this from the swings from the high to the low if we measure out with our fibonacci retracement we see that the market just recently entered a discounted price the market recently came into the discount price beneath 50 percent and then rallied away now this doesn't mean that this is going to be the higher low that's going to then cause another higher high when the market breaks up and continues bullish now it might be but i don't think it is if we pay attention to a few other things that we see on the market here we see that there's imbalance found lower. There's a lot of imbalance found right here. And then also this whole area right here that caused this break of structure is an area of demand. So honestly, personally, I'm looking for this area of demand to get filled before I look for long term holding on Bitcoin. And this is anywhere beneath 20K pretty much. This is and on a higher time frame, like maybe the yearly or something. It's pretty much a yearly order block. We see this yearly order block right here which then rallied off. So again, it's basically this whole down move that then caused this BOS is a yearly area of demand. And there's an imbalance sitting right above it and inside of this area sitting right here, sitting here, and even sitting a little bit there. So we're looking for these areas to get filled before Bitcoin continues to make new highs. So this is what we're looking at on the monthly chart, the super long time frame. Let's go to the weekly on the weekly the candles are a little bit like mishmash they're put all together so we're going to skip the weekly and go to the daily just so we can see what's happening inside of this higher high on lower time frames so now on the daily on the daily we can see the candle structure a little bit more clearly we can see that the market was creating higher highs all the way until we got a break of structure and this is like I know, or as we know, where I took a Bitcoin short. I have a few videos on that, so we're not going to get into it. But so here at the monthly higher high, we see how on the daily chart, we get this break of structure to see that, okay, we're most likely going to be delivered lower prices. So now if we just look at the structure on the daily chart, this was the higher low and then the higher high right here. And then boom, as soon as we traded beneath this higher low, most people saw this as just a pullback in the uptrend, but to us traders, day traders, or people that are informed, we see that the market broke structure to the downside. Then what do we expect? After same kind of like um, knowledge or same kind of logic, we're gonna apply for an uptrend, we're gonna apply for a downtrend. Whenever the market creates a lower low, we then expect a correction in the opposite direction. So that way, when the market creates this lower high right here, people see it as a pullback. So then all the retail traders are just loading up their buys here to then get tanked when the market drops, all right? So then now we created another lower low. And again, same logic. After a lower low, it's normal to expect a bullish correction to create a lower high. 
And so this lower high will be placed somewhere up here if we measure out premium versus discount in our last range, in our last swing range. We're most likely looking for the lower high to be formed somewhere above 50% of this impulse move down, which is the discounted price. So smart money is most likely accumulating orders here to most likely take price higher into an area of supply to then keep taking the market lower. On a higher time frame, like on um, the weekly, we can see that there's in what looks like a weekly order block right here. And then let's go to the daily. All right, yeah, we can see that this weekly order block is the last area of buying on the daily structure before we got another break of structure beneath this low. So this is going to be our weekly supply. And there's also imbalance protecting this area. Weekly supply plus void. Oh, wow, I wasn't even typing on the thing. Weekly supply plus void. All right, so we're expecting bullishness in Bitcoin to bring the market up to our area weekly of supply to then continue the bearish structure lower where we're looking for longs according to the higher time frame structure. So now on a lower time frame, there might be a lot of buying opportunity inside of this daily lower low. Let's go to an intraday time frame. So looking at it here, this is a Wyckoff accumulation schematic. This is a very ugly Wyckoff accumulation schematic because there's this big wick going down here. So that, that would actually be our selling climax. So if we're going to mark that up, this is going to be our selling climax. Make it a little bit smaller. And then from here, this was the automatic rally. And then here we got an STNB or a shakeout. And then after this, we got a failed upthrust action. The market failed to create a sign of strength. However, it did tap into the automatic rally and then cause the market to go lower. So then after this point, the market is generating a lot of liquidity and like a trend line on the top side here, which plays out to the accumulation schematic that we're looking for. So this is our FUA failed upthrust action. Here we get another ST. Whoops, I didn't want that to be lowercase another ST. And then from here, we get a last point of support. Now, again, this is a very weird Wyckoff schematic, but we're going to go over how you might be able to trade this. So the typical Wyckoff schematic looks something like this. The typical accumulation looks something like this. The seller's climax, an AR, ST and B go lower than the selling climax. This ST and B should create a new high for a sign of strength. And then after that sign of strength, we should expect another liquidation of all the lows in the spring to then take the market higher. So again, this is not a textbook Wyckoff accumulation, but it is a Wyckoff accumulation. We see manipulation of lows and exposed liquidity on the top side. This is the characteristics of an accumulation schematic. So here we can see that the market was creating lower lows as the market came up and then it was trading lower and we kept creating lows. You see this ST got grabbed, it formed a low what seemed to be a lower high and then another lower low at our LPS, or this could be an LPS slash test. There we go. So this area honestly would have been the area I wanted to buy at. There was most likely an order block sitting somewhere in this area that you could have traded off of. However, like I said, when there's a weird Wyckoff schematic, it is best to wait for confirmation after the fact because Wyckoff um, accumulation is going to be consolidation inside of a range. Once we get the breakout and the confirmation that it is an accumulation, then it's very safe to trade on. You just have to wait for the pullback into the accumulation range. So now we have to figure out where's an area of demand that will most likely get attacked in this market. So we can see here that if we're looking through um, our Wyckoff schematic, this last grab here and this last test or LPS liquidated the low of our ST, which was looking like maybe a support or something, it also grabbed all these trend lines. So like a trend line here or whatever retail traders might have seen the market, something like that, and then we see it gets attacked. So we know that most likely this push down was the area of demand that then caused a move up. So again, we can see 
that this move up, we traded above our area of demand, most likely breaking some structure. And then we already traded back into this area of demand to then also go higher. So now I would most likely be targeting this area of demand for buys. And we can see that the market is coming close to it. And we can see that we did, whoops, we did trade above the FUA. We did trade higher and above these highs. So this is going to be our SOS, our sign of strength. And we're going to be waiting for this move back down into this intraday area of demand to possibly see a lower time frame Wyckoff schematic to trade higher. Now, again, this might not play out. This might not hold. For all we know, the market will come down lower. However, we can see here that in our test slash LPS, if we play back the market right here, after we see, let's say right here, the market was, this was the live market. There is like a, there's support sitting all here. This is what retail traders might see. They see support sitting there. They see a trend line. They see something along these lines, right? Something very basic retail methods. So we see here that smart money uses institutional selling to grab all the liquidity found at these lows, just like this. So again, like I said, this whole push down was institutional selling or an area of demand to then fuel a breaker structure to the top side. So now if we're looking at it, we can see the market creates, it's creating a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So now once the market trades above this high, that will be considered a BOS. Because like I said, again, if we're looking at structure, we were getting uptrending structure and then we switched to now get downtrending structure. So once we break this first um, lower high, we're going to then be looking for the retracement back in to our zone. So then here, if we play price through, we already know it happens. I'm just trying to give you like what the feel would be like if this was the live market. So we see after we break structure, now we expect the trade back into this level to go long anywhere inside of this level. And then we see here that the market then comes back into it and then trades way higher. And that develops our new area of demand. And so we see when we got this pullback, it came and filled absolutely all the imbalance on the intraday. All the imbalance that was left behind, this void left behind by this stop hunt, which then broke structure, got filled by this move down to then take price even higher to give us our sign of strength. So now the only imbalance we see left in the market is here in our new area of demand. I didn't mean to fling my scrunchie like that. So in our new area of demand, and this is going to be most likely where we're going to be looking to go long and not just go long blindly. We're going to be looking for buy confirmations inside of this area. Why cough accumulation, price delivery, liquidity grabs, supply and demand, everything that we trade. All right, guys. So basically, like I said, I'm expecting longs from this area to trade higher above 50% of this area. Basically, not literally like this, because like I said, I'm not just going to be entering blindly here, but entering first target, most likely the sign of strength, second target, the 50%. And then the third target will be this weekly supply. All right. Obviously, I will keep you guys updated. If I get into a trade on this, I will. I have it on my watch list. I'm, I have my eyes on Bitcoin. We're looking to go along, but not for new highs. That's the thing. This is where people get confused. They think this Wyckoff accumulation is going to take Bitcoin to all time high prices. Now, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe that might happen. However, this comes back to supply and demand. We see that at the all time high of Bitcoin, we saw the shift from an increase of demand to then an increase of supply because we got this break of structure here and then we got another break of structure here. Once we get a few break of structures in the same direction, that tells us that the supply and demand um, equilibrium has been flipped. All right. So again, as higher prices were being delivered, it was because there was more demand than there was supply for Bitcoin. And then inside of this area, something changed, which then caused the supply to be more than the demand. And that is what then caused our lower prices. And so here we're going to take the same thing here at this moment. When the market's coming down, there might be more supply than there is demand for Bitcoin. Everyone is selling Bitcoin right now because a they're trying to short it or B they want to let go of their Bitcoin that they bought all the way up here. 
So what do they do? What does smart money do to generate this demand so it equals their supply? They generate the market to trade higher to get people to buy in, to get retail buyers to buy in, to build demand, to then meet their supply which will then most likely take price lower, all right? So this is how we trade supply and demand using Wyckoff and also using all of the other smart money concepts here at Self-Made Trading and Investing. If you guys are interested in learning the ways of how I trade, all the concepts, all the schematics, Wyckoff isn't anything special. It's, there's a lot of public info on it. But if you're interested in my private courses, my group chat, anything like that, you guys can hit me up. My contact info is in the description. I appreciate it if you stayed this long in the video. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Have a great day, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.